Welcome to Planet Rack on Tour, where we who tell stories rule this world. I am your host, Yuck Nasty, and I will be your guide into our world that is filled with sights and sounds, both wonderful and frightening. Have you ever had a love that went to pieces right in front of your eyes? Well, this first story is all about that. We hope you enjoy The Cat is a Metaphor by Corey Maloney. The Cat is a Metaphor by Corey Maloney. So this guy I know, he broke up with his boyfriend, but they lived together for a while after because they shared a lease, which is basically just as awkward as you would expect. And they had a cat. This gray tabby who's missing half of one ear and... Both of them refused to feed it on the grounds that it was the other's problem, so they kept living together, and fought, and exchanged bitchy comments, and occasionally had sex when they got drunk and or felt maudlin. And the cat got thinner, and thinner, and thinner. Eventually the cat died, only this was some kind of macabre-ass Schrodinger scenario, in that it was impossible to say exactly when the cat died because it kept going like nothing had changed. It still scratched furniture and meowed and rubbed up against your leg, except now its claws got stuck in the furniture, and its meowing sounded kind of wet and decayed. And when it rubbed on you, it left streaks of itself behind, ruining your favorite pair of jeans. Not that I'm still bitter or anything. And in death as in life, it really liked lazing around in sunbeams, which you can imagine what that did for the smell. Anyway, my friend finally moved out once his lease was up. I ran into him a few weeks back and I asked him whatever happened to that cat. He told me that after a while it got down to a skeleton and it would just prance around trying to get their attention. Clack, 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 clack. And they both just tried to ignore it. And each other. Until one day at breakfast, the cat was dancing across the table and it stopped. And it looked from my friend to his ex and back. And then a minute later, it kind of shuddered and collapsed into a little pile of bones. And then the bones turned to dust. And at some point, my friend or his ex, he can't remember which, they swept the dust into the trash. Its animating force diffused. A memory. A whisper. A fading dream. The End. Our next one tonight is very unusual. We went a little crazy with this. Papa Dave did a remarkable job, and I had a blast producing it. This next story is entitled Grawl Gash of Varn, and it's by Jessica Freely. This is Grawl Gash of Varn. By Jessica Freely. The warrior beast of Vaughn crapped her arm from the hides of their defeated foes. When I first met Gralgash at the beginning of the Half-Lands campaign, he was already a veteran of 50 battles. His breastplate encrusted with the gemstone scales of plaf lizards, the razor-sharp plumage of vengeance hawks nodding from his hand. I was there the day he slew the Dragon King, And I will never forget the sight of him climbing the monster's back. The red rays of the wasted sun sparking from him, turning him into an ever-shifting kaleidoscope, a beacon of hope that could be seen for miles and miles. In the end, I had to look away or be blinded. So I missed the killing blow. But I helped him skin the worm. And I asked him if he would retire now that the enemy of the righteous are dead. 
Never, he said, as he measured a length of adamantine skin against his inseam. So it was a surprise to see him tonight in the apothecaries. I had picked up a new packet of Wizard Wax Joint's patented rheumatism medicine and was on my way out when I spotted a tattered feather bobbing down the next aisle. When I turned the corner that he was, perusing the medicated talcum powders. White hair showed around his muzzle. The bright scales and fiery plumage of his armor were all but gone. Sold off, most likely, to make rent on a drafty little room, just like mine. I don't know if he recognized me, but the look on my face must have been plain enough. More terrible than the siege of Bone Keep was the fall of his gaze to the floor. He turned away before I could speak and I watched him go. My words of greeting caught in my throat, chafing like the dead scales of all the victories. And finally, our last tale of the night is called Coffee Break by the author Avery Brooks. Here's a peek into a different world, one very much like ours and very much not. Without further ado, here's Coffee Break. Coffee Break by Rob Butler. So the ethics committee's coming to have a look then? <sighs> yeah. This is really annoying. I'm so close to the end of the experiment. Hardly slept since I fired it up two weeks ago. How did it happen? <sighs> I popped out for a coffee. You had a full-scale universe simulation at the 99% stage of its life? and you popped out for a coffee. I would have been back well before I needed to check the final parameters, but... But? Well, I bumped into a vet from accounts and... And? Well, I've always liked a vet, so we started talking and... and well, I, I persuaded her to come out for a date with me. Oh, good. I am so pleased. That certainly makes up for the fact that you've wasted almost the entire budget for this department for the next two years all right <clears throat> so you go back to your console and discovered that intelligent life had appeared within the simulation yeah which was obviously going to happen as you have an identical model of our universe in which as we know intelligent life appeared at least some of it's intelligent yes but instead of making that little tweak to stop things at the bacterial level, you were off canoodling with a vet by the coffee machine. Well, we weren't exactly canoodling. I don't care what you were doing. Look, can we switch it off before the committee gets here? Fait accompli. Let them have an imp... Let, let, okay, stop. Let them have an inquiry. And when the dust has settled... We can fire it up again. We can't do that. There's billions of them. Billions? How long were you out there canoodling with this event woman? Uh, hardly any time at all, actually. It's just that with the vastly inflated time scale inside the experiment, and they're developing very rapidly. I mean, since I got back from coffee, they've gone from the Stone Age to space flight. So, <clears throat> will the committee just let us stop everything and kill it off? Or... Horror of every possible accountancy horror there is. Do we have to keep the simulation running until these life forms die out naturally? That could bankrupt us. Uh, I really am very sorry. I'm, I'm a physics student. I'm not very good with all this biological stuff. 
Does Yvette know that? Mind you, they are a bloodthirsty lot. I reckon if we don't pull the plug, there's a chance they'll just wipe themselves out anyway. Really? Well, let's hope so. That would certainly solve our problem. I might even get to keep my job. Have they got nuclear weapons by any chance? Oh yeah, they figured that out a few minutes ago. They're making great strides now. It's actually very interesting. They're closing in on the answer. What answer? The reason we set up the simulation in the first place. The universe, how it started, what it is. They found all the same issues we have. Dark matter, dark energy, the relative weakness of gravity, and they nearly sussed it. They're gonna solve the simulation for us. That's fantastic. This could get us out of jail. Why didn't we think of doing this in the first place? It's genius. But will we get the answer before the committee arrives? I'm bound to. They're seconds away. Come on, my beauties. Come on. (sighs) They cracked it. And what's the answer? They discovered they're in an artificial containment chamber. They're pretty pissed off. So... They were in a simulation universe identical to ours. Identical, yes. And they found all the same problem areas that we're trying to resolve. Just the same, yes. And they discovered this was because they were in a containment chamber? Yes. The two stared at each other. Their tails wagged thoughtfully from side to side. The end. Well, there you go. Another trip to Planet Raconteur. On behalf of myself and our two fine raconteurs, Papa Dave and Bobby Anthem, we would like to thank you for listening once again. All of the stories presented on Planet Raconteur are used by permission or are in the public domain. Check out the show notes for details on the authors, their websites, and their other releases. And if you like what we are doing, please subscribe and follow us on all of our social media platforms. The links will be found in those same show notes. Much love, and thank you again for visiting the Planet Raconteur.